Log Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gypsy Poet Radio here on blogtalkradio.com front slash Gypsy Poet. I am the Gypsy Poet, and of course, with me is the lovable and wonderful and talented and sparkling and humorous girl George. Yes, people, girl George, say it with me. Girl George, girl George, girl George, girl, oh my lord, what a show. So we got ourselves the publisher of Psych Trail Mix Magazine, none other than Brent Smartly. Is everyone with me? Hi, girl George. Hi, Gypsy Hello. Poet. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good. Thanks for having me on. I, like I said before, it's flattering that anybody really wants to interview me. So oh, I appreciate course. you having You're me on your one show. Of the most interesting people I know. You've got oh, a great you. magazine there. How did you start doing that magazine? Yeah. Uh, well, I started it, I guess it was. It was late 2007, early 2008. Um, I always loved to write. I even had you know teachers in high school and creative writing class saying, "Oh, you're a really good writer." You know, I had a teacher one time call my mom say how good of a writer I was. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I always love music, so I figure you know I love writing and I love music, and you know combine the two and just try to put out my own zine. You know, I've seen other people's zines, so I figured. You know, put out something that, that you know it's easy to write if it's something that you know that you love. You know what I mean? Rather than getting assigned a term paper or something where you have to write about some boring <laughs> subject that you don't like. You know, this is uh, easier. It comes to you a lot easier if you're just writing about you know things something that you love. You wrote wrote about my movie a few years back. Yeah, yeah. I remember you sent me a copy of that in the mail, and I yeah, I did a little review of that. You know, it just that happened yeah, that that, that same issue. You did a, a a story on the holy molder rounders, so I found out yeah. where that song "Fucking All the Sailors in Chinatown" came from because I didn't know. I do the song all the time, and I, I'd sort of heard the story, but I didn't really hear the story until it was in your magazine. So that's how. Uh, I found yeah, out. those guys are quite interesting. Yeah, the holy. Yeah, we had them on our, our radio show a while back. Wow. It's yeah, I think they were. Bizarre. It was a while ago, but I think they were one of the first bands to mention LSD in a song, something like that. I, I oh, they go way back. Like yeah, the songs are funny too. The guy right, like the guy have like a kind of high pitched voice. You screech in the lyrics and stuff. Yeah, they had a song that was in that Easy Rider, the bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that Easy Rider. Well, song. Nick Nicholson's on the, on the motorcycle, all stoned out of his mind, and their their song is playing in the background of that. That was real cool. So how did yeah. you meet Helios Creed? He's an old friend of mine from back in the the day in, in Norris Beach. About 1973, we used to play in the same clubs together. Yeah, Helios Creed, um, well, we, we got turned on to, um, I guess, his first band, Chrome, through a band from Texas called the Butthole Surfers. We know we... Luckily, we had the internet, you know, in today's day and age, so it was easy to look up information. So we just started browsing things, and then through them, we discovered that one of their biggest influences was Chrome and Helios Creed. So, you know, we looked up the music, and we got hooked on Chrome right away. Basically, the Chrome are much weirder and more intense, <laughs> it seemed, than the Butthole Surfers, you know. Uh, nothing again, we, you know, love the Butthole Surfers, but, you know, Chrome were the sort of godfathers of the buttholes, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, and I I met Helios the first time. I guess it was maybe a couple years after I first discovered his music. It was a show he did in 2003. Um, me and a friend of mine, we were under 21 at the time, so we had to. Uh, I couldn't get in the Philly show, even though I knew the opening band. So we drove to um, to Baltimore to see his solo show there. Um, they would let you in and put a little X on your hand to show that you're under 21. So um, he was he was just kind of hanging out. Um, side stage, and I don't know. We we're kind of, I guess, kind of starstruck at the time because we, you know, many nights up late listening to Chrome records all night long. So we kind of shyly, he was. I walked up to him, and he was behind the merchandise table selling T-shirts, and you know, we just said hi. I'm a really big fan. Love your band, and you know, he was really, you know, friendly with his fans. He just walks out into the crowd. So got to talking to him. We exchanged information and. Basically kept in, kept in touch ever since that time. Birthday's coming up too pretty soon. He's a Scorpio just like me. My birthday's in two days, and his birthday is in no, 
first part of November. So we're all Scorpios. What sign are you? I'm a Taurus, actually. Uh, Taurus. You're the opposite. Mm-hmm. My daughter is a Taurus. I like Tauruses. They're nice and mellow. Scorpios are fucking intense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> So are Saggies, George. So are Saggies. Oh, God, I'm not even going to go there. i got a couple of questions for you. First of all, I want to know, what. Um, let's talk a little bit about your magazine and what it's about. Is it strictly about music? What's, is it culture? Is it what? Please elaborate on this thing, because i actually been looking it up, and I want to know more. So, oh, um, yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's mainly about music, I guess, for the most part. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, basically what it's about. I review music CDs, interview musicians, um, books and DVDs. Um, the only thing, I guess the only thing that's not music is in the, the end of each issue, I put a little rant, which is basically where I, you know, bitch about things that annoy me or things that I think are stupid, you know, so that's about ah, the only thing that's not music in there, so. Oh, that's pretty awesome. So it's all, so it's all about music. You don't have any other stories in there kind of thing, I see. Um. Well, actually, there was one, like, I kind of, I guess, like, I like to cover different things kind of out of the ordinary. I remember one of the issues, um, it's probably issue number two, We I covered uh, a trip that we took to um, this place called Centralia, PA, um, mm-hmm. which is basically a town where they have uh, this fire that started, I think it was over 50 years ago, an underground um mm-hmm coal fire or underground under the ground there's this fire that's been burning for the last 50 years and there's holes everywhere with smoke coming out of them you put your hand up you can feel the you know the heat coming off there's only i think like seven people left that live in the town you know that that most of like i think their zip code got revoked you know years ago and so that was i covered that with pictures and stuff so that was i said something not music related that i covered so i see i gotcha very interesting um so you said that you met, you started this back in 2007. Is that what you said? Um, it was around late 2007, uh, early 2008. I gotcha. And it's uh, and it's all been and it's all been about um, and it's all been about music and all that and all that great stuff. Um, yeah, for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Do you um, is it just you that uh, that has this, or do you have it with like a whole group or pe- of people, or is uh, what is it all about? Like, yeah, um, is it like a, a well, collaborative effort? Uh, for, for the most part, it's just me doing all the writing. Um, sometimes mm-hmm. I get submissions from different people, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, articles here and there from different people that have submitted. For, but I mean, ninety percent of the time, it's just all me doing everything. So that's why I guess there'll probably be more issues out. I, I, I probably get one out maybe once or twice a year. I try to shoot for twice a year, um, mm. but since it, I mean, it's just me doing it, it takes a while to put it together and. You know, can mm-hmm. put all the pages together and whatnot, and do all the writing. So, yeah, it's just me. It's basically a one-man show. <laughs> uh, I, I have to admit, I really like it. The artwork on here is phenomenal, and uh, and I love what you what you have here, even on the website, which is American Independent Psychedelic Music Zine. That's a yeah. great title. Yes, great idea. Do Thank you do you. all the artwork? No, no. That see, that's the one thing. Like. If I could do it, I would. But that's the one thing I definitely need help on, like the front covers and things. Those have all been, uh, you know, submitted by by different artists and things. So that's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm horrible at drawing. So that's one <laughs> thing too. I definitely can't do. <laughs> but I mean, as far as like const- like putting all the graphics together with the writing and so the pages, you know, look good, everything. I do all that. But yeah, for as far as drawing and stuff, like the front covers, I don't do any of that stuff. How old wish are you? I could. I really wish I could do it, but I yeah, I just my suck at drawing, so I can't do it. How old are you? I'm twenty nine. Twenty nine. You're a baby. I'll be yeah. sixty nine in a couple of days. <laughs> sixty nine. Wow. Oh. Mm-hmm. So where are you at? You're in Philly. Yeah, I'm just outside of Philly, in the suburbs of Philadelphia. So you've been there all your life. Um. Yeah. You're an East Coast boy. I'm, I'm West Coast. We're, I'm in California. She's down in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, we're out here on East Coast for you know Lou Reed and Velvet Underground and all that. Yeah, yeah that's too bad. Lou Reed passed today. Yeah, it's a shame. I love the Velvet Underground. I remember when I was a teenager first discovering the Velvet Underground and you know how the experimental music and whatnot. It was yeah, they were phenomenal. They were incredible. 
Oh, you got to write a story about them for your next issue. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely, or at least put a dedication to Lou Reed. What I've done, like, if somebody, like, a musician that I really like dies or whatever, I'll, I'll usually, at the minimum, put a, uh, you know, a little dedication to them, you know, and then, you know, talk about them for a little bit. or You know, but I remember I did that with Dickie Peters at a Blue Cheer. Oh, Dickie's a friend of mine. Yeah, I remember he was on your show, right, back in the day? Oh, he was on my show, but I know him back, 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 back when he first started in San Francisco playing. You know, we played the same place, the clubs together. Yeah. You know, we're old friends. I, I got in touch with um, Dickie not long before he died. We were going to do an interview, but, you know, unfortunately he passed away before I got to do it. Yeah, he's a real sweet boy. I think he's from North Dakota, is he? North Dakota really well. Yeah, originally. <laughs> Where are you I from originally? I haven't noticed that because my, my, my son-in-law is from North Dakota, so I noticed he was from North Dakota, too. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Blue Cheer I was great. Ask- I love them. And where are you from originally? Philly. Me? Yes. Oh, um, well, I guess just outside of Philadelphia. I've been here my whole life. I, yeah, I grew up... Uh, I guess that if you want to get technical, it was a town called Linwood, PA, just outside of Philadelphia, a little suburb of Philly. I always say Philly because, like, you see these little, you know, suburban <laughs> towns and nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. So I just say Philadelphia. But, yeah, I've been, yeah, East Coast, just outside of Philadelphia my whole life. Father, do. My dad, he's a uh, he's a blue-collar guy. He um, He's actually looking for work now, so if anybody's listening to this, and give him a job. <laughs> Yeah, he um, he's an electrician. He's been an electrician most of his life, and um, you know, just stuff like that. He worked in an oil refinery the last time, and uh, before he got laid off, thanks to these you know corporate greedy assholes out there who you know shut everything down and kicked the working man to the curb. But yeah, that's yeah. You know, my dad has always been a blue collar guy and always been positive about things, you know. So despite you know, being dealt a shitty ham with the way things are going nowadays for the working man, so. Did your mother work? Yeah, my mom was, uh, she was, I guess, uh, you could say a nurse for, for many years, doctor's assistant type of thing, so she doesn't work right now, but she was, uh, yeah, she was a nurse. Tell us a little bit about your influences in music and uh, what led to uh, wanting to create this uh, this phenomenal magazine you have here. Well, uh, the, I guess the earliest memories I have were when I was a kid digging through my dad. My wife, my dad, was probably one of the first people to, to turn me on to rock music. I guess from digging through his vinyl collection, he used to play old records for me. I remember Pink Floyd and you know Led Zeppelin and all that early classic stuff. Um. So, yeah, that's the earliest memories I have. And I remember getting into uh, Nirvana was big. I was a big Nirvana fan. And when, once I got into high school, I started getting into the punk rock stuff, the old punk rock. Um, you know, the, I guess bands like Circle Jerks, Black Flag, TSOL. And then um, eventually that led to psychedelic music, which is probably my biggest influence because I guess it was around, I guess, mid-high school. We started getting into the psychedelic music, the 60s stuff and things like that. And, that opened up a whole new world because it basically, I guess it showed what, you know, the possibilities of music and, you know, how you could add effects and things and have a sort of three-dimensional feel to music, you know what I mean? So that once I discovered the psychedelic music, that was probably one of the biggest influences, you know. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Uh, yeah, I have one sister, uh, Adrian. She's, I guess... Three and a half years older than me. She lives down in Florida. What does she do? Does she wear? Um, she's. To be honest with you, I guess I'm kind of embarrassed. I don't know where she works right now, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say, I know she she went to really? school. She's got a degree and everything. She's I think she went to school for uh, to be a teacher. I believe is what she's what she'd like to do. But uh, that's my daughter does that. She's studying to be a teacher. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a good thing. Are you looking to uh, to do more with the magazine in terms of expanding it to other venues, or do you, do you just want to keep it specifically to the psychedelic um, realm? 
Well, um, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of people that ask me, they say, well, you know, would you want to do this full time or, you know, make a living out of it? But it's kind of, I guess it's kind of hard to make a living off of, you know, sort of obscure psychedelic music. Um, but now, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, if the opportunity came up or somebody offered me money or something, to, but I, I don't think I would try to change what it is. You know what I mean? Like the the freedom about doing your own scene is that you're not tied to, you know, assignments like, you know, cover music that you don't like or anything. So I, I mean, I'm probably just keep it as it is for now. You know what I mean? Do you yourself play music? Um, yeah, I, I play guitar um, mainly just for myself. I mean, I haven't really. I played in my friend's band years ago. This band called Sub Primitive uh, mm-hmm. from Philadelphia, and I only ever played one live show in my whole life. And it was back in 2004. We opened up for uh, Nick Turner from Hawkwind, mm. and um, I remember during the show. We were playing. We did a Hawkwind cover, and while we were doing that cover, Nick Turner came up with a saxophone and came up on stage with us and started playing. So that was quite a trip, you know, my first live show, and then having someone that I really admire come up on stage with us. So that was really cool. But that was, yeah, basically that was the only live show that I ever played. Awesome. But yeah, I play guitar sometimes just for myself. You know, I don't really. I'm not in a band or anything. So, but yeah, it's fun. So you have an issue that just came out that's dedicated to Chrome. Yeah, yeah, issue number eight, the um, yeah, my big Chrome special. It's probably the one that I think is probably the most important one ever because it's you know Chrome is my favorite band and Helios Creed is probably my favorite musician, not probably but definitely. So yeah, the big Chrome special is out and I still have print copies for anybody who might want one. But um, so what's yeah, the really address or how do they get a hold of you to get a magazine? Well, if they I guess the easiest way is if they go to, um, I run the Helios Creed tribute site, helioschrome.com. And mm-hmm. if they go to helioschrome.com, I have a link right on the front page. Um, it's in red lettering. It says alert, click here for, you know, Chrome material, or I forget how I word it exactly, but there's a link right on the home page that um, gives info on how to how to purchase a print copy. So, uh-huh. yeah, it's helioschrome.com. And at the end of this video, we're going to have some Helios Creed music live that you taped. Where'd you tape it at? Yeah, that was um, that was a show in Philadelphia that I that I taped in uh, 2008. Helios was touring with his um, I was uh, it's called Chrome Helios Creed, the Dual Forces tour, where he did half the set was um, the first half of the set was his Helios Creed solo material, and then the other half he did all Chrome songs, which which was a real treat. And that was actually the first time I had ever heard, you know, Chrome songs done in a live setting. So, yeah, that was a great show, too. But, um, yeah, that I thought it came out really good. We were right up front, front row, which was great. And I had my little, you know, recorder, my microphone uh, attached to my hat, and I probably looked like an idiot standing there with a wire, you know, coming from my waist <laughs> to my head. But I had to capture the moment, you know, Helios Creed in Philadelphia. First time I saw him in my hometown, so which that was, that was cool. So we got his okay to use it on, on this show, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I okay. actually spoke with him last night, and he said, yeah, use whatever you want. Well, that's great, because we didn't get to use one on his his uh, his show. He he did our very first show. Helios Creed was on our very first show, and we oh, hadn't wow. figured out how to really get music onto it yet, so there's no music on his show. So we'll finally get to have Helios Creed and Chrome's music on your show. Oh, great! Yeah, I remember his show. I, I listened to his interview that he did on your show, and it was it actually turned me on to the fact that he was in a movie with Willie Nelson and Chris Christopherson, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, you found the picture. Yeah. You're amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I went through. I dissected it, which I always do with anything Helios Creed and Chrome related. I found the scene, and I cut out that part, and it's all on the website if people want to check it out, and I put, you know, Helios, I, I think I actually put a clip of uh, the interview from your show on there with the Helios talking about it, so, yeah, that was cool, oh, I never great. knew that, I'm surprised you never brought it up, but that he was in a movie with Willie Nelson and Chris Christopher, so it was funny. Well, you're a great help to me, because sometimes people send me these MP4s that I haven't the slightest idea how to open, and I send them to you, and you send them back to me as MP3 so that I can use them. So you've been a great yeah. help on this show. No, Thank no you problem. very I... much, by the way. 
No problem. Yeah, I like what you guys do, and you know, I always like all your, you know, the interviews that you guys have done have been interesting. So, you know, anytime you need help, just let me know. Well, if you you know and anyone I, you know, I'm, that's I'm, I'm, interesting, I'm, send them our way, and we'll interview them too. Okay. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, definitely. I um, I'm used to doing all that converting sound files and things for the Helios website. So I'm, you know, I'm used <laughs> to doing all that kind of thing. So yeah, anytime you need help, I could, you know, do my, pr- probably most of what you need. You know, as far well, as that's that. That's great. That's great. Are you married? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, got married in. I guess it was 2010. Yeah, September 2010 to um, Amanda. Name's Amanda. Any babies? No, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> no, oh, no, I'm not, not quite ready for it yet. You know, I'm not kind of. Uh, on the fence about it a little bit, you know, but I don't know. Well, sometimes it finds you, honey. <laughs> What's that? Sometimes babies find you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, besides running the magazine, are there any other things that you do? Um, Well, I besides running the magazine, I mean, I basically just, I mean, I love listening to music. I'll go to live shows whenever I can, whenever something good comes around here. Um. Mm-hmm. I got kind of a boring job. I do accounting work, you know, just looking at numbers all day and things. But the good part about my job is that I can listen to headphones, you know, so I can sit there and listen to music all day while I'm doing this sort of boring, uh, you know, numbers stuff. So it's, you know, it's not too bad. I can actually, I can brainstorm different uh, different issues of psych trail mix while I'm at work. So I hope my employer is not listening to this and fire me. You know, when I say I'm not doing, you know, I'm thinking about, Psych like Trail makes music zine while I'm sitting there, supposedly uh, supposed to be doing my job. So, yeah. Uh, I oh, really well, like as long as he gets a job done, he shouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's the way it should yeah. be. As long as he gets yeah. work done. Yeah. I was going to say, I really like the title of it, like Psych Trail Mix. It's, it's like um, just I can see it being a, a whole variety of things, so that makes it really amazing to, to look yeah, at. Yeah, my name is... Also, Mm-hmm. Well, I named it Psych Trail Mix because, mm-hmm. I mean, most of it is psych, like psychedelic related, but Trail Mix comes into it because like, like there's a little bit of, like there's there's some punk rock in there, you know, which is the other music I like, and you know even the old classic stuff like like I guess uh, Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, all that stuff. So it's a mix of everything, you know what I mean? Not just psychedelic. So I, mm-hmm. I thought Trail Mix was kind of a funny, uh, you know, cool. Uh, name to put to it, so it was, it was the best thing I can come up with at that time, you know. Yeah, I was going to ask, um, who does the artwork for some of the um, uh, uh, for some of these pieces? Um, well, well, actually, for the very first issue, this is kind of interesting. The, the actually the first and second issue of the um, of the Z, and I had Helios Creed's son uh, create the artwork for it. His name is Eric. So he 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 actually made the artwork for the first and second issues. And uh, how old is he? I think he's um, Eric. I think is just a few years older than me. Not too much. Oh, older, really? Old. Is that old? Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. My, um, well, my kid's about thirty-five, so I guess that's about right. <laughs> I think I, I, I forget calls him how his, old I am. <laughs> Helios calls him his Chrome baby. He was, he, I guess he was born back then that. during the you know the Chrome years. Yeah. Yeah. Great! Oh my goodness! So, um, um, I wanted to ask, how did you and Girl George get uh, get to know one another? How did y'all meet? Um, a good question. Helios. I'm actually trying to remember. Was it through Helios? Yeah, Helios. Obviously, that's our, our connection. Yeah, I guess it was. I, well, I remember a while ago I saw a picture that you put up of Helios. I guess from like it was like 1980 or something with your with your little girl. Maybe that was that because I had some pictures of Helios from about yeah it was about 1980. And, yeah, and I uh, thought it was really cool pictures from back like, in the early days. That's probably where I met you. I put those pictures up and you said something and I I pushed my movie down your throat and and you uh, read about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, well, your movie's great. I love your movie. It's really cool. Oh, oh it took me goodness. like four years to edit that thing. Because there was no music in it originally, it was just, it was just, uh, it, it it was just blah 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 talking, you know. Yeah. So, what if have, have you ever had any offers for 
for somebody to pick it up and put it out and maybe make a few well, bucks off I, of it? I just finally just put it up on YouTube. Fuck it, I want people to see it before I'm dead. Here I am, this is what I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm just putting it all out there. I'm 69 years old. I ain't planning on getting discovered at this age. I just want it all out there for my kids and my grandkids and Aren't you amazed by what I've done? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, you know, I love I love your documentary. I think it's actually I'm probably should watch it again. I haven't watched it in quite a while, but it's really interesting and basically well, the, that's funny. the same idea. I, I, I like to keep it funny. It was pretty funny. Yeah, I try to infuse a little comedy with the zine too, but um, yeah, I mean it's basically the same thing with with my zine. Like I, you know, I'm not really looking to make any money. You know, I probably, if anything, I lose money. You know, putting this yeah. thing out, and especially with this last issue, since it was a really special one, I, I did a much larger print run than I normally do, and I, I sent boxes to record stores across the country, and, you know, trying to spread the word of Chrome and, and Helios Creed. So, well, artists are never discovered until after they're dead, anyway. So I'm just putting it all out there so they can find us after we're dead and go, wow, and, and like. Twenty years from now, your little magazine is going to be selling for a million dollars a piece after you're dead or something. <laughs> be nice. You know yeah. how it goes. It would be better if it was while I was alive. People started sending me lots of money for it. You know. It would be nice, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. Don't well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe once, maybe once people stop uh, paying too much attention to Orange Housewives and the Kardashians, maybe they'll wake up and start. <laughs> Searching the internet for Miley you know, Cyrus that, you know. or Miley Cyrus or whatever right, her yeah. name is. My goodness! <laughs> yeah. Don't get me started. Cause I'm no, Viva. don't get me started. The yeah. Viva, the Viva. Well, if you get, if I get you started, you're going to get me started. So then the rest of the interview will just be me bitching about yes. you know things that, that that are obnoxious to me. Yeah, sing me some songs. Sing me some songs. Tell me who you hate. Yeah. Who who who, yeah. who irritates you most in the world? What performer? Um, no, I, yeah, I mean, I could easily. I people who spend a lot of their time obsessing over, you know, these these Orange Housewives and Kim Kardashian and, Con, and Con, <laughs> oh, Kanye. Kardashian, my God. Yeah, and, and this <laughs> this this guy Kanye West who's running around saying that he's a rock star and Ew. the fact that people equate him with any bit of talent whatsoever kind of turns my stomach. So. I guess those people are probably the yeah you know I mean, people always say and like those why are the ones that are making money the the people yeah, that are the actually part, creating yeah. anything original or new or or artistic or well you we'll wait until you die yeah and then we'll yeah. sell it we'll make the money off of it that's that's the way it's always been you know, right Van well people Gold always didn't say didn't make any money till he was dead yeah well people always say like why are people you know, famous for nothing. You have these celebrities who are celebrities for nothing but making a sex tape. Well, the reason is is because, you know, you That's have people, people that want. give them attention. You know what That's I mean? What you have people, people that they gobble want, it up. They want yeah. gossip. They want sleaze. They want sex sales. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anybody, like, if you're, like, I, I can tell, like, sitting at work, I see it every day. Like, if you... If you're working, you see somebody on downtime and they're surfing the internet or whatever. They're not looking up good music or you have the internet at your disposal. You can find anything you want. Instead of that, they're on these celebrity worshipping websites and they're looking up, you know, fucking Kardashians engagement, you know what I mean? Instead or of porn. <laughs> or porn, yeah. Like nothing with any substance, you know, so I don't know. That's what I bitch anyway. about a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, you just proved a point right here on GPR, believe it or not. I know that this is going to be quite the conversation started by the water cooler. I know that for a fact because <laughs> because it's not just what you just mentioned, but it's like what's lacking in these days is substance. But this, that's what my show is about. It's about substance and getting the good stuff out there. So uh, with less than a minute to go here, I wanted to ask a little bit about it, if there's anything you really want to plug because I'm going to be plugging your magazine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The um Probably my biggest thing right now is is um my what I just released, like Trail Mix issue number eight, the Chrome special. Um I have print copies available with nice glossy color covers and how much do they cost? Um well the the cost for the issue itself is five dollars and then plus shipping, which is three dollars in the US, four dollars in Canada. Um the UK I think is seven because they have outrageous shipping prices for there for some reason. anywhere else you have to email me. Uh, Psych Trail Mix at Yahoo dot com for a shipping price, and um, yeah, go to Helios Chrome dot com. And like I said, there's a link right on there. It says Alert, uh, biggest piece of print material on Chrome to date. Click here, and then all the info there 
on how to purchase a copy is, is um, right there on the website. And I have actually a little uh, video I made about it with different uh, different Helios Creed um, live clips and you know information about what's in the magazine as far as Chrome material goes. And I dug up some amazing exclusives for it. So all the information is right there on the site, and I have still have print copies left for anybody that wants one. Awesome. I'll, I'll be sure and ask you for one uh, shortly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Gypsy Poet Radio, and of course, the, oh, it's uh, of course me, the Gypsy Poet, and the wonderful, ever hilarious and sparkling girl, George, this afternoon here on GPR. And of course, Brent Marley of Psych Trail Mix Magazine. Please go to the website to check it out soon. I will be posting it on my Facebook page shortly. So for those of you listening in on the show and those of you that missed it, you can actually catch it here. It is just 15 minutes after it is archived. So I am actually going to sign off for the afternoon. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you so very much, Girl George. You rock the house every single time. Brent Marley, it was a joy to have you on the show, and I'll be buzzing and blasting your magazine shortly. So this thank is you. Gypsy Poet. Yes, this is wonderful to have you on. The Gypsy Poet says... Adiós for now. Bye. Ciao.